Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at extracting spirals from art in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to create a new file here. It doesn't matter how big your file is. We need a triangle because we're going to start with cones. This is courtesy of a subscriber who asked the question. So I'm just going with the pen tool here to create a triangle shape. I'm going to fill it with a color and I'm going to remove the stroke from it. So I'm setting stroke to nothing. The fill color needs to be something that we can just see right now, just not black. It's going to disappear later on anyway. To have our spiral, we need some rectangles. So I'm going to drag out a nice long rectangle here and I'm going to fill it with black. This will be the color of my spirals. I'm going to select it with the selection tool. I'm going to hold the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac, and just drag down to create the first of my lines. I'm going to repeat this with Control D on a PC, Command D on a Mac. If you're used to using that process in Photoshop, this is a different keystroke, just be aware of that. Select over all the lines, go to the Symbols palette, click the plus sign and just click OK and then you can delete your lines. You don't need them any longer, they're saved as a symbol. You need a symbol to be able to map art to a 3D shape. We're going to select our shape, we're going to Effect, 3D and Materials and we're choosing 3D Classic and Revolve. We're going to revolve this around to turn a triangle into a cone. Now. If yours doesn't look like this and it looks like this, the reason is your triangle went the other way, which is just fine. Just change the edge option here. I need to use left edge because that's the way mine's looking. Now in terms of the position, you can choose whatever position you want. I'm going to show you inside the application, the mapping application, that there are some that are less easy to use than others. So let's just go now to mapping our art. This one's going to be okay because this white area is where we're mapping to and it's all in one block. If you choose a different sort of axis, let me try something different. You might find that this white area splits. I'm not able to find something now, but I created one earlier that was a bit of a problem. So when you go to mapping, oh, here it is, mapping your art, the white area is broken in two. That's not going to map really easily. So just save yourself from problems and choose something where when you go to map art, the white block or this lighter block is all a single block, not split in two. It doesn't matter the dark one, but it does matter the light one. Now there are going to be two surfaces in a sphere. There's going to be the circle at the bottom, and then there's going to be the main surface, which in this case is our cone. So I'm going to symbol, I'm going to choose new symbol because that allows me to map this symbol over my cone. And you can see that covering the white area, everything is seamless. If we had white split in two, it's not going to be seamless. You'll see the break. It's just not going to work as easily, if at all. So what I want to do is make this look a bit more spirally. So I'm going to rotate this. You'll see that I'm missing bits off here. That's because I haven't covered this white area or this lighter area, so you're going to need to make sure that you cover everything and you can just adjust this shape while you're in this dialogue. Adjust it until you get the right amount of sort of swirly on your cone. You can determine what it is that you want, just make sure you cover the lighter area completely and click OK. And then because we're done, I'm just going to click OK again. Now it's not possible to achieve this result with no fill. So that's why we're doing this in the first place with a fill. But ultimately we want to get rid of the green and just have the black spirals. Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to choose object and then expand appearance. And what that does is it breaks it out so it's no longer a 3D object. It's just the things that made up that 3D object visually. I'm going to open up my layers panel because you absolutely need to be poking around in here at this point. We're going to open everything up and you'll see that there are groups and groups and groups and groups. So at this point, what we're going to do is just see what we've got. There is a clipping group here and this is the back of the shape. A cone has, it's because it's three dimensional, it's got the front panel, but it's also got a back panel and this is the back panel. So when we turn it off, nothing happens because we weren't seeing the back panel anyway. So we can safely just delete that. This is the base and because we've got 
a shape that doesn't include the base visually, we don't actually need to see that. So I can grab that one and toss the entire group. This bit looks like it's underneath when I select it. Looks like it's down here. I don't think it's going to affect the shape at all. I'm certainly just going to turn it off at this stage. If I don't need it or find out that I don't need it in a minute, I'm going to delete it. So it looks like all the action is in this clipping group. So let's open it up. Well, here is the black lines and here looks like the green shaded area. So let's turn it off. Perfect. We don't need the green shaded area, so we're going to toss that. And this looks like our conical shape. So what I'm going to do is grab this group and just pull it out of everything. Now, nothing broke. This clipping path wasn't actually affecting it. If this process broke it, then I would just undo it. But it looks like it's having no effect at all. So I basically don't need anything here because it's not helping at all. So I'm going to toss all of that. The idea is obviously just to clean up the layers palette so all you're left with is all the bits that you need. So I'm having a look inside this group and you can see it's just the black lines. It's just that swirl. So what I'm going to do is select everything in that group and if I want to make it a single object, I can go to Object Compound Path Make and that just forces it to be a compound path. Well and good, but we've lost our color, but that's fine because it is a compound path. We're just going to add the color back in. And if we have a look at this shape, it's a single shape now and it's fully transparent. So we've only got the black lines. We've got no background. And so you can use that in anything you, you like in future. Now the same process is going to happen if you add a sphere to your document. So a sphere is half a circle. So I'm going to the ellipse tool. I'm going to drag out a circle. I'm going to remove one of these anchor points. I end up with a half circle. I'm going to make it a color other than black though because I want to be able to see my lines as I'm actually developing this shape. Effect 3D materials, 3D classic revolve to make a circle. And of course, we're going to have to change the offset if we don't get the shape that we're looking for to start off with. I'm happy with this shape. I'm just going to map art. I've only got one surface here for the sphere. You can see that this is the shape of it. So I'm going to apply my symbol to it. I'm going to stretch it out, make sure it covers the light area on this map angle it if necessary so that I get it going the way I want it to go. I'm going to need to stretch it now because by rotating it I lost some of the cover on my surface. If I'm happy with that I'll just click OK. OK again. I've got a problem here so I'm going to go back in and edit this. To edit it I need to find the appearance panel again so you'll go to window appearance. And you need to click on this appearance because otherwise you would be adding a second appearance and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to see if something is going to give me a better shape. Well, off axis back gives me a better shape. Let's try off axis right. I don't have any of those split lines. So I need to make sure that, I'm, that I couldn't use unless I joined it up properly and that's time. So I'm going to use one of these that did work. Off axis back, I'll click OK and now I'm going to expand this. Same thing in the layers panel, we're just going to open it up and see what we've got. One of these is going to always be the back panel. So you can see this one is sweeping this way, so that's the front panel, but this one here is sweeping the opposite direction, so it's the back panel. And by turning it on and off, we're not seeing any change in the document at all. So I'm just going to get rid of that back projection. Now we're going to open this up and see where, where everything is. Well, here is our green circle. We don't want that any longer, so we're just going to trash that. This looks like the bit that we do want. Let's drag it out and see if it stays intact, which it does, which means that we don't need this group any longer because it's not affecting our shape. Inside here, again, we've got the same thing. We've got all these beautiful swirly bits that go to make up this swirly shape. Well, we're going to select everything and we can force a compound path by going to Object Compound Path Make, fill it because we expect that to happen, that we're going to lose our fills. And then we can just test that. A, it moves as a single object. 
that's part of forcing a compound path, but also it's fully transparent. So we could put different things behind it if you like. So there is a quick and easy way of creating these sort of transparent spirals using the 3D, the old 3D tools in Illustrator, the legacy 3D tools. Also a bit of understanding as to what happens when you expand 3D shapes in Adobe Illustrator. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.